Hey there, hopefuls! It's Melissa. Thank you for tuning in to the Hopeful Simplicity Podcast. Throughout these episodes, we're going to talk about common organizing questions and situations. I cannot wait to help you simplify, sort, and sustain your organized and less stressed life. So let's jump right in. In today's 15 minute find, we're going to the living room. Okay, I love a fuzzy blanket as much as the next person, but do I need 20? Yes is not the answer. (laughs) Self, you, whatever. (laughs) Today we're going to stay in the living room, but look at anything that is being unused when it comes to couch blankets and pillows. I know, they're all snuggly and soft and warm and cute, and I love them, and I touch them at the store, and I'm like, oh... I'm going to need that in my life. But you know what? There comes a time where you reach for the next new O moment, right? You next, oh, I like that one better. So when you're snuggled down on the couch or making a fort on the floor, any of the blankets that you didn't reach for first, those are the ones we're going to declutter and simplify out of our living room spaces today. Now set those timers and tune in as we talk about today's organizing topic. Today's topic is brought to you by the Organizing Style Quiz. Personal organizing styles can vary from person to person and space to space. Determining your style for success is the first step towards simplifying, sorting and sustaining an organized life. Grab your complimentary quiz online today. The time our topic is going to be something I get told as it's response to to I don't even know if it's response to a common question but it's more like something I hear often of people just kind of accepting where they are and it's I don't have time to get organized and now I get it of course I get it right like I don't have time to whatever I choose I don't want to do Like, I don't have time to lose weight. I don't have time to start a business. I don't have time to read more books. I don't have time, dot, dot, dot. And time is such a precious thing, right? We we get to choose how we spend it. And sometimes we have to get past the misconceptions of the hows and whys and what we're supposed to do with spending that precious thing called time. I don't have time to organize is often, in my experience of dealing with potential hopeful clients, um, what I hear when people think that getting organized is just some magical thing that's going to happen in one day. Like they have to dedicate an entire day or an entire weekend or an entire week to do everything. Like I'm going to go from ceiling to carpet and everything's magically going to get organized on the way down. And well, it's a misconception. Like let's, let's be real honest. We get to decide how we want to spend our time. Yes. There are moments out of our control. The kids call and you need to go, right? You get a text from the boss and you need to respond. You get an email and you're like, ah, crickets. Let me put that fire out. Yeah. There are things that center and focus our time. But when it comes down to it, how, like, how are we spending it? We have a, a common, we, I mean, I have a common response to that of, okay, you're right. You don't have time to organize. If that means you're thinking you need to spend an entire day or an entire week doing it. I'm not going to ask anybody to do that. But my response is, do you have 15 minutes today that you can focus on organizing. That's it. That's the general question. Do you have 15 minutes? Now the 15 minutes comes about because my age and generation, and I might be dating myself a little bit, is before all the streaming thing. And we would maximize commercial breaks. Those commercial breaks would come on, you know, like after this break and you will like scoot to the edge of the couch and think, all right, is this going to be when I make a sandwich? Am I going to get a drink? Or is it a potty break? Or do I flip the laundry over? Or what is it like? How am I going to spend this five to seven minutes and maximize this super fast break before you hear the bell come back in and be like, okay, we're back to the show, you know? So that's my mindset. How can I do this? Like, oh, okay, I have a minute. What can I do? That's kind of where it starts. 
Well, fast forward to our current living situations of so many streaming opportunities. And those streaming opportunities are brilliant because they'll be like, okay, cool, great job. You watched that episode. Do you want me to automatically go to the next one? And you're like, yeah, I do. All I have to do is stay comfortable under my blankets on my squishy couch and let you automatically think for me. Cool. That's God, even I love that concept, right? Like even I love the idea of not having to think because you're going to automatically do it for me. Yes, please, Socrates. But what if you took the power back? What if you said, mm, yes, I do want you to start that, but you're not in charge of me. But I'm going to take those 15 minutes back and clean out my junk drawer. Yep. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about taking the powers and finding the moments you have. Maybe it's, you know, while dinner is cooking, you're going to go through that paper pile that's lasted for the last week. Maybe while coffee is brewing, you're going to go ahead and put the dishes in the dishwasher. It's finding the time that's capable and probably already hidden in your schedule that you aren't even like maybe noticing. It's not that we don't notice it. It's not that we aren't capable and productive human beings, but it's that we're stuck in that spot of, I don't have time to do this, so I'm just not going to. But what if we make and find the time? What if we break it down into doable steps? That's what the 3S method is built on. It is breaking things down into 15 minute finds of doable steps. You're not gonna organize the kitchen in one day, but you're going to spend the 15 minutes today simplifying the pantry. Tomorrow, you're going to spend 15 minutes and sort that pantry for your organizing style. Maybe the next day, you're going to sit down with the calendar and schedule out maintainable, sustainable habits and routines and check-ins with that space. Bam. Yeah, you just spent 15 minutes for three days in a row to simplify, sort, and sustain a space. It's a small space success and it's shifting that mindset of no, no, I cannot organize the kitchen in one day, but I can do this. I can control this. I can find the 15 minutes to make something better than it was before. And then in six months time or in eight months time or heck in a year's time, you're going to look back and go, damn, I did that. Yeah, I did. And then that shift is going to happen. You're going to slowly, it's not going to take a full year, hopefully, but over time, you're going to be like, okay, cool. What else can I do? Right? Ooh, you know what? I'm standing here waiting for this to magically happen. For me, it's I'm waiting for the popcorn to pop. What can I do while I'm standing here? Now I will warn you, <laughs> hyper productivity can become a thing. So be mindful, go to make a space better. In our world here, and my son will tell you, there's no such thing as perfect. But what can you do to make something better today so it's less stressful tomorrow? And how can that be finding 15 minutes to simplify, sort, or sustain a space? Today's episode was sponsored by the monthly membership group. Are you looking for guidance along your organizing journey? ready to get some answers to your organization questions, or even just looking for some accountability in achieving your goals, the monthly membership group can help with all of that and more. To see if the group is the right fit for you, find details and clips at hopefulsimplicity.com. That's it for today. Be sure to subscribe, like, and share this with all of your favorite friends. And until next time, stay hopeful.